morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. It is May 3rd, and we are doing our series on Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So the goal is every day this month, we will feature um, and spotlight someone in the Asian community. And today, my special guest is my brother, Jin Mo Lee who is a professional photographer in the Denver metro area. Good morning, Junmo. Morning, Priscilla, how are you? I'm great. Even I love even your, your camera there is so professional. <laughs> Everything, <laughs> it's so nice. So, hey, before we um, get started, I went to your website and I mm -hmm. found this quote. It was really, really amazing that I feel captures what you do. It says, a professional portrait shows you as confident but approachable and is the image you want to present no matter what the occasion. Your image speaks for you and about you. It is you, your persona, your brand, and it's my job to make sure we create the best you in the best on the best day so people look forward to meeting and working with you. And I just felt like that absolutely encapsulates encapsulates um, what you do as a photographer and how you pull out the best in people. So, because like even now uh, mm -hmm. in this digital age where everything now is done through the camera, mm -hmm. right? And done through video, how do people present themselves in the best light? And so I just wanted you to talk a little bit more about how you got started in becoming a photographer and some of the things you've learned as a photographer. Um, sure. Uh, I've been shooting full time now for six years, though I've been um, sort of in business for the past 11 years. Uh, I left my corporate job back in 2014 um, with Intel and decided that I want to do photography full time. Um, but the corporate life and experiences that I had prior to being uh, going full time photography has given me a lot of experience working with corporate professionals. Um, people who need headshots, uh, not, not just corporate professionals, but the interaction and understanding that image does, um, uh, is important for people and, and making sure that you display the right image. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be serious all the time. It can be whatever it is that you want people to know you for, whether it is buttoned up and, and very serious or very uh, uh, fancy free and, and free flowing. It's my job to make sure we capture that image and, and you're able to express that to the people that you want to receive. Now, I'm sure you've seen a lot of photography mm -hmm. and um, people say, oh, well, you know, I can't afford to have a professional shot. Um, but there are pros and cons, right? To I, it is a cost analysis. If you, you know, I don't know. Everybody charges something different for professional photography, but that image is out there forever. That is the an impression that people get when they go to your website or they see your resume. Um, that is out there forever. So, what would you say to people who don't think that it's important to spend a lot of money? They'll like hire their friend to take a picture on their iPhone or something. Um, what kind of advice would you give to them? You know, really, it, it comes down to the best camera is the one that you have. Um, meaning that if you have, if that's all you have is your um, smartphone, or if you have a, a, a DSLR yourself, or your friend can take a good picture. Uh, I'm not opposed to that. But there are some differences. Um, if it's just a friend, then um, they may not know the best lighting or the best pose or try to bring out the image or the best expression for you. And that's why you go to a professional. Uh, and and it's, it, it's a little bit of investment, um, but it's investment in you. Because again, this image is about you. We're past the point now where I meet you in person and I make up my mind about whether or not I wanna work with you or, or um, build a relationship with you when I meet you uh, uh, for the first time in person. That decision now happens online. I'll look you up on LinkedIn, look you up on Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is. And that image, if it's you cropped in because you're next to your ex and you don't like you <laughs> not with your ex anymore and you just want that to be you though because it looks really good, okay, but it, it's gonna it's gonna be obvious, right? If it's a goofy, fun picture and that's what's all that you're all about, then that's fine. But sometimes if you're trying to establish, especially if you're um, doing a startup in business for yourself, 
you want to establish something that makes people feel confident about you, um, that you're a professional and they can trust any advice or working with you. And that um, is what I do. And that's why, you know, you'd hire someone like me or, or and then someone who has experience doing headshots. Not all photographers are good at headshots, just like not all photographers are good at doing all different types of genre. I have a friend that's an amazing landscape photographer and what he does, I can do, right? Uh, because you know, he's, he's willing to trek miles into wherever um, back country, get up at three in the morning because he wants to get that morning light. No, I, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do that. And on the flip side, he, he looks to me for advice. Well, how do I get a good headshot? We all got lucky, right? It's like, oh, I got that one uh, photo. And people say, that's a great uh, photo. But professional is able to repeat that, and do it over and over again. You know, not just get that one lucky shot. So again, that's why you go for a professional. And it's investment in you. It's doesn't, headshot photography price range can vary. And sometimes depending on what you uh, pay for with the photographer's charging, but also sort of indicate their experience. Um, so if it's something relatively cheap, 50 bucks or something, then you're, you can kind of expect that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but once you get up in scale, in, up in um, the scale, you know, $100 or beyond, mm -hmm. um, then you're, you're, you should expect more and you should get more for the, those type of photography. You know, you made a really great point that not every photographer is the same and people specialize in specific type of uh, photography. So it's really important for people to go to you um, if they want a very well done headshot. You do more than just headshots. As you, and I looked on your website, you do beautiful photography, um, different types of photography. Um, what would be some things that a client should look for um, in addition to the pricing packages? Because I know that it's really important for a client to talk to the photographer, be really clear about what they're looking for so that the photographer knows, you know, how much time they're going to invest and, and things like that. But what are some other things that a client should ask as they're searching for a great photographer? Well, yeah, first and foremost, do they have a portfolio of headshots? You know, when you go to a photographer's webpage and hopefully they do have a webpage, it's not just Facebook or Instagram, um, but they actually have a web page. And then you look through the images there. What kind of photography are you seeing? If it's mostly landscape, uh, you know, beautiful sunset, sunrises, pictures of Yosemite, or even here in the Rockies, you know, um, beautiful images, but those aren't headshots. And just because uh, the images are um, beautiful may not mean that the photographer, uh, he or she are capable of doing um, good headshots. Um, if they have a lot of pictures of people, that's a good sign because that's what headshots are about. But again, if it's mostly family portraits, um, it's not the same. Family portraits is, is meant to show the family warmth, love, and stuff like that. Um, and, and that's great. But again, not necessarily headshots where you want to come off as a professional, have some professional images, get the right exposure. Um, so those are a couple of key things. If, if they don't have much of that, you know, specific headshots on their webpage, then it, it could be a little questionable whether or not they can pull that off. If they do have headshots on their webpage, but it's sort of like tucked away, then it's sort of like not their specialty. Um, and not to say that family photographers can't do headshots, but I, I'm on the flip side. I do headshots and then I occasionally do family photography because I spend a lot of time um, education to look at um, what makes a great expression. My puppy's scratching at my <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and, and so the thing about photography or for headshots is you have this to work with. I don't have a whole lot of body mo movements. I can't really technically, you're not supposed to bring hands into the, into the uh, uh, headshot because that no longer uh, is actually a definition of headshots. And definition of headshot can vary. I mean, if I, if I have a pose like this, where I see my arms folded, then yes, some people call that a headshot, but technically in my definition, it isn't. Headshot should really be right about here, right? Just at, uh, below the shoulders and above the head, right? Because um, on, on social media and on even business cards and sometimes on web pages, your image is really, really small, right? The actual image is being shown. So your face needs to take up at least 80% of that image. 
if you have me on a mountain bike because that's what I want to do, that can work if that's the uh, personal brand you're trying to portray. But I can't see your face very well if I, if I have you and the mountain bike and the environment. I might get an idea. People who already know me might recognize me. But people who are trying to get to me the first time, they're like, OK, I think that's you. Um, and there's been plenty of studies about uh, when people go through LinkedIn or uh, those type of professional sites, they will skip past photos that have just a, the blank silhouette the bookmark um, with no actual photos. They'll go to and gravitate people who have photos and then they'll gravitate to those who have good photos. Um, and so that's, that's the thing that uh, I, I try to accomplish and that's the thing you should look for to see on a photographer. But, you know, a little bit on the pay scale too. I mean, what they charge. If it's 25 bucks, um, 50 bucks, then okay, maybe. Uh, but usually you start getting into uh, specialized headshot photographers around 150 on up. And then depending on how many images you want, um, style of clothing, environmental portraits or not, it can go as high as a 500. Um, so it, it, but, I'm gonna um, add for people who think that it's just you're just taking a picture. No, it's also the editing and going through all of the images to pick the best one. I mean, people think, oh, why should I pay $200 for a headshot mm -hmm. when they don't realize there's additional work that goes into making that image look good for you, right? Yeah, you bring up a good point. Editing is an important process of the um, final uh, image that's delivered. Uh, and I will edit photos, but I always tell all my clients that I'm not going to make you look 10 years younger. I'm not going to make you look like you've lost 20 pounds when you haven't, because the whole purpose of a headshot is to represent you. And like you quoted uh, on your best day. Um, and that's what I want to show. Uh, so if people come up and they look at your picture and I say, and they say, oh, I'm looking for Priscilla. And you're like, I I'm Priscilla. And like, oh, okay, <laughs> right. I, I see, oh, you know, and I, I never want that to happen. But I do want people to say, you know, I found you and I love your headshot. I mean, that's the best compliment that I could get. Um, and then and I think for the client to hear. So the things I do on editing is um, lighting is important, but lighting uh, on an image, people sort of scrutinize it a little bit more because it's still, and they look at it and they, you know, so blemishes that are temporary, obviously I'll get rid of those. So if you're like, I can't get my head shot today because I got this giant mouth soup, um, Vesuvius on my forehead today, like, you know, we'll fix that. Um, I make sure the lighting uh, is as flattering as possible without making it look too over edited, right? We've seen those issues on magazines and people say, wow, look at, you know, I keep thinking Madonna, but Madonna had a photo out there where they showed a before and after and it looked drastically different. That's not my intent. I do want to make it look really good and I'll uh, fix corrections that just weren't possible in the studio or that, you know, I might've missed here and there. Um, I de-emphasize wrinkles, but I don't get rid of them. And I say de-emphasize because lighting, it can be kind of harsh. Mm -hmm. And so in natural light, and when you meet in person, those things don't show up. Um, but on a still photograph, people kind of look at it a little bit more. And so I just try to de-emphasize that. Um, so yes, editing is a process. Um, and it's not just one and done. It's like you come to the studio, I take a photo, and then we're done. It's not like going to Walgreens or to get your passport done. It's, um, we go through about 30, and between 30 to 100 images. And from that, you'll, um, we'll pick, uh, depending on how many images you want. And, and then from there, I'll go and edit those and then you get those uh, delivered to you in, in a final professional um, image. So when someone comes to you, um, I know I've been told, you know, know what you're gonna, work, know what looks good on your body, mm -hmm. know what type of, um, image you want to portray if it's very professional or if it's um, business casual. Uh, that's where the client needs to do their homework. I would imagine show up with a few different outfits and know exactly what your target market is with your image so that you know what best to um, help support the client with. Um, and I know in your studio, it's an option for someone to get makeup done because I know a lot of people are not professional makeup artists. So you are a full service right. photographer. Yeah. Um, as far as clothing goes, I do have guidelines. You can find them on my website. But basically what you want are solid colors, right? Maybe not the logo, <laughs> but solid colors. You want to avoid um, crazy patterns because they photograph weird. And it, this is a headshot photo, uh, photo. It's about you, not necessarily the clothes you wear, but clothes are important. 
so for a lot of men, definitely come in with collared shirts and a jacket. If you want to go really formal, obviously a tie. Um, but don't come in with the, your latest Hawaiian print you got from Maui because that may not photograph it well, unless you're a travel agent <laughs> who trying to promote that kind of stuff. I mean, the clothing does dictate a little bit of what it is that you do and the image that you want to project. Uh, but mostly it, it has to be about your face. Um, um, but still, the clothing matters. What I tell people uh, is to find clothing that you've been complimented in, you know, avoid mm -hmm. patterns, solid colors are good. Uh, avoid white or black because, well, everybody has white or black. Um, uh, but then, then people just kind of choose this neutral gray thing, which is fine. But if all you have is a white shirt or a black shirt, we'll make it work. That's, that's also part of photographer's job to kind of work with whatever you, um, the, the client shows up with. But um, yeah, I, I, that's why I tell people, wear, wear what you want to wear to show off what it is that you want to project. You know, if I'm going to be, and it's also that old adage, don't dress for the job you have now, but dress for the job that you want, right? Same thing, you know, if you're, if you're a manager and you're looking to become a VP, look at what your VPs are wearing in a company. You know, if it's a collar shirt and a jacket, bring that. If it's a more relaxed atmosphere where it's just a polo, fine, bring that. Just again, avoid the crazy pattern stripes, usually vertical or horizontal, they can be challenging. Um, and, you know, wild flowery pat patterns that look great in person, but don't photograph very well. It's not a fashion shoot, it's, it's a headshot session. Oh, that's a great point. <laughs> you are bringing up so many amazing points that are important for people to know. And so what I would love um, everybody to know about you is like you're a dad of two, mm -hmm. a husband, mm -hmm. and uh, I've had a chance to work with you, like with our, our brother, Brett, uh, who's <laughs> also a fellow right. photographer. And that's how I met you. And you are just so, you're so awesome and your heart Oh, for thanks. people and you're so in tune with with others you know and you're so empathetic and even your own personal life's journey where you, you know you have really good priorities systems in your life and so i think that those are things that people might not know about you as an individual i mean i just see your that you're a photographer but they just don't know your character so i, I think it's really important i wanted to let everybody know how awesome you are oh, as a person and that we need to give you business when we're um, opening up because like i said at the beginning we are now forced to change the way we right. do things and now everything is going to be more digital and not that it hasn't been but you know, people have an opportunity now to kind of rebrand and start over. Mm -hmm. And so this is a perfect time for them to consider getting new headshots and refreshing themselves. And so um, just a fun question I want sure. to ask you, um, what have you found during this time that you're able to do that you weren't able to do before? And what's bringing you joy? What What's making you smile during this time? Um, so what I've been able to do during this time, you know, I spend probably a little bit more time in social media than I should, but I do it with more professional eye. I have a lot of professional headshot groups within um, uh, uh, Facebook, and then there's some creative groups I'm in and Instagram. And so right now, taking the opportunity to look at other types of portrait photography, um, because mainly I'm a people photographer. Yes, you know, I do headshots, and you know, like I said, I do family uh, photos, but I like taking pictures of photos. Mountains and sunsets are great, um, but for me, it's the memory, it's the photo um, of that person that is special in your life, or that you, uh, you know, your family stuff like that. Um, th that for me, that, that has more impact. Uh, we all have seen the pictures of Ansel Adams and Yosemite and Mount uh, El Capitan. All that those are beautiful images. That those are still there. Pictures of people, it's transient, right? You know, you look at those old photos from the past. Um, and, and, you know, I, I kind of want to make sure I, I'm able to provide some of that history, some, um, and, and just headshots or family photos, that kind of stuff. Uh, but what, um, what, I, uh, what have I been doing uh, in the meantime, a lot of getting ready for moving into the next phase of whatever this is that we're going through, um, trying to make sure that once I can get back in the studio that I have a uh, safe environment as possible. Luckily, photography, there's some distance between us automatically. You know, I'm not going to get really close <laughs> right. to you. 
Um, and I have equipment to get really far, but make it look like we're really close to you. So I've been getting ready to do that. Uh, actually I have a small section on my website that talks about uh, uh, COVID-19 and what we're currently going through and the measures I put in place to, to ensure a safe experience, but still a fun experience as much as possible. Um, so I'm just kind of getting prepared for the next stage here to looking forward to getting back into the studio and even on site. Um, but also trying to keep everybody's uh, and my um, health in mind to make sure that we stay safe. So how can people find you? What's your website? Uh, you can go to jumoleephotography.com and that's J-U-N-M-O-L-E-E photography.com. Um, again, you'll see mostly headshots. That's what I do. Uh, I'm gonna be on the flip side of things. If I've done your headshot, then I'm more inclined to do family photos for you. <laughs> I like that connection. I, since I know you you've come to the studio, it's easier for me to connect to you and the rest of your family as opposed to, I'm probably shooting myself foot in the foot over here, but as other family photographers that you just look up um, because it's kind of hard to make that connection, but there are plenty of photographers that can do that. I just I like having the instant connection as opposed to trying to work through the first 10, 15 minutes trying to figure out the family dynamic. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at jmleephoto. That's my Instagram page. And you see a lot of headshots there um, as well. Um, and then I'm on Facebook as well. You can look up Jim Lee Photography uh, on Facebook and find some stuff there. You're everywhere. It's gonna be easy to find you. And so, okay, Junmo, brother, thank you for being our spotlight today for Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. We want to encourage all of our young people to explore different careers um, and you represent the Asian community uh, in the Denver metro area so well and so we want to encourage people to give you business and we'll put your website in the chat on Facebook as well and so please stay healthy and give our love to your family and your daughter and uh, your puppy who is not in the camera but we wish we could see your puppy is your puppy close Two no, he finally went away. We have two puppies. Yeah. Okay. Finally went away. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. And well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. It was great speaking with you. Oh, the other thing, you know, um, even though we're sort of obviously staying at home more, um, but this opportunity to, to interact online and video, it's great. I mean, I actually haven't seen you for uh, over a year. I know. <laughs> person. But this, so this is great seeing you and actually getting to talk to you. So this yeah, is the positive. Yeah, it, this as well. Junma, I've been connecting more uh, deeper connections through COVID than I have, you know, in the past. It's forcing us to slow down and go, oh, yeah, I can actually like sit down and talk to you. Hey, I tell you, virtual happy hours, re cheaper and much easier, to get to, you know, and coming home, it just, it's, I'm already there. So don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Thank you, brother. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Be safe. All right. You too. Bye-bye.